Hey, what's going on everyone? This is the Trendbody back with another video and today we are going to talk about the new iPhone. Of course, you have already got the idea from the title. And as you are watching my video, you have no right to be wrong. Another thing that's extremely useful is the subscribe button on this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that before leaving this video. And of course, hit the like button for this one as it will make the positive contributions to the growth of this channel. And check out the gear I have used to make this one in the description below. Get back to the topic, which is always the most anticipated phone of the year. The iPhone 13 was launched in September just 5 months ago. And with its launch, we saw some biggest upgrades the iPhone had since the iPhone X. Now, of course, we have already got a significant amount of information on the iPhone powering from leaks to rendered. There's a lot to cover on this upcoming beauty. So, without further do, let's get started. Line up and display size. First up, we have the size. Let's be honest, Apple's naming scheme has been really badly the easiest to understand. And when it came to pronunciation to the access map, suffered was it access or was it access, we'll never know. This year, Apple has decided to make it even more confusing. There's rumored to be a new size option in the iPhone 14 lineup called the iPhone 14 Max. It is going to be the same display size as the iPhone 14 Pro Max has but without any of the Pro capabilities. This one is for the people that want the larger display size for the Pro version but weren't willing to shell out an extra $200 to $300 for it. The iPhone 14 will have inferior hardware but as we have seen with the iPhone 13 mini, Apple does a pretty good job of optimizing the phone even if its hardware isn't bleeding edge. The updated line would then consist of the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Pro, iPhone 14 Max and finally the iPhone 14 Pro Max. According to the Mac rumors talking about the Mini, this would be a good time to mention that there's not going to be a Mini versions anymore. Yes, you heard that right. The iPhone 14 lineup is not going to have the Mini versions. This is because of bad sales with the previous Mini versions. Although the iPhone 12 Mini and the iPhone 13 Mini were the best deals that Apple offered, they both had surprisingly bad sales and now Apple has just decided to discontinue it. Next up, we have got the much awaited camera redesigned front-facing camera redesign. The iPhone notch is cool, said no one ever. Sure, it was a revolutionary step when the iPhone X was released. But since then, there has been no major change in the design for the last three generations. The only difference has been a slight decrease in the size of the notch. But apart from that, there hasn't really been any improvement in this area. Androids, on the other hand, have explored everything from pop-up selfie cameras, revolving cameras, the screen cutouts, and even under-display ones. Sure, you can say that Apple doesn't try wild and wacky ideas, but even still, we should have seen some improvements in the design by now. It seems like in 2022 might just be the year we get to see that as it being rumored that Apple is going to go with a hole punch camera design this year. Let me know down in the comment section which design you are into. Should Apple stick with a notch or is the hole punch the way to go? Coming back to the topic regarding how Apple is going to get rid of the notch without getting rid of the face ID. According to Mark Gurman, expert on newsletter for Bloomberg, Apple is working on improving face ID so that the sensors can be placed under the screen. As for the camera, that is still going to be a screen cutout. Since let's honest, the under display ones offer an irreversible decrease in camera quality and the technology just isn't mature enough for mainstream phones right now. If you were one of the people that were hoping that Apple might bring back Touch ID with under display fingerprint sensors, I'm afraid that's not going to happen. At least not in the iPhone 14 lineup. This is because optical under display scanners aren't fully secure and the supersonic ones are a bit slow as we have already seen with the Samsung S21 Ultra, which despite a high-end chipset has a significantly slow fingerprint sensor. Back redesign. The front camera isn't the only thing getting a redesign. The iPhone 14 is also getting back redesigned. If you have seen the latest Astrid Pro leaks, you know that Samsung is going with a lens implanted PDP in frame look rather than a separate breast camera bump. Apple is rumored to be doing the same, taking inspiration from the iPhone 4 rather than from Samsung. While it's hard to believe that Apple would make the iPhone thicker just to get rid of the camera bump. What is most likely to happen is that Apple is going to just add lenses directly to slightly reduce the camera protruding from the back. Personally, I would love it if it ends up looking like the iPhone 4. However, if it's anything like the Samsung leaks, that's a hard pass. Maybe the design will go on me once I use it. But as of right now, I'd wish Apple doesn't try the Samsung approach. Titanium casting. Let's talk about the body before we get to the internals. The new iPhone 14, at least the Pro models, are going to come with the titanium casting. Apple was already ahead of the competition in terms of build quality and was using stainless steel while others were still on aluminum frames. So that jump towards the titanium casting is a big leap and while it does offer quite a bit production, it's also going to increase the price. 
Now I know what you were thinking about whether the titanium will help in heat dissipation and the answer is no. The titanium casting is just there for increased protection and reduced weight, something which the parallel models did desperately need for thermal dissipation. Apple has been said to be testing a vapor cooling chamber. Of course, vapor cooling chambers have so far been limited to either gaming phones or really high end one. While Apple does shake the high end chipset box, they don't well need a vapor cooling chamber since the Bionic chipset series has the industry's best optimization and Apple has never really faced any overheating or thermal throttling issues. The introduction of the vapor chamber cooling system means that this year we are going to see a significant improvement in the processing power of the A16 Bionic chipset. Apple has always had better performance in terms of raw processing power but lagged a bit in app launch times and loading. So this year we may see Apple finally catch up to Android on that. Let's wait and see how that goes. The internals. With the design and the body done, it's time to jump into the internals. The iPhone 14 is coming with the A16 Bionic. Now there are two possibilities and both have critical sources. I'll let you know which one I'll lean towards after I have told you both. First is the A16 Bionic being based on a 4 nanometer chip manufacturing process. You might be thinking that's obviously what's going to happen since that's what every manufacturer has been trying to do. This was first claimed by Dizzy Times. It was what everyone thought was going to happen. The next possibility and unfortunately the more likely one is that we are going to see a 5 nanometer chip for the third year in a row from Apple. This news comes from a report by TSMC themselves. According to the report, the new chip is going to be a 5 nanometer one but with a more efficient building process. The report claims some performance improvements. However, these improvements aren't going to translate much into the iPhone performance since Apple was already using them. What this means is that the A16 might not be really as powerful as we thought. We are just going to have to wait and see what happens in this department. Since nothing is for certain yet, I would love to see a smaller chip with better performance, so fingers crossed on that battery. Finally, we have got the most important parts of the iPhone, the battery and the ever mighty iPhone. According to TSMC report, the new chip is supposedly 10% more powerful as compared to the previous iPhone 13 chip. This might not sound like a big deal, but keep in mind that Apple has already blown basically every other brand out of the wire with its battery life. A 10% increase in battery life means that you will never have to worry about battery ever again, which to be honest, Apple has already achieved with the A15 Bionic new camera system. Moving on, it's time for the camera. Apple has reportedly been working on a new camera system. According to Mac Rumors, we are expecting improvements to the ultra wide lens, and there's a possibility that the iPhone 14 could get a periscope lens that allows for greater optical zoom. But it's not clear if it's slated for 2022 or 2023. According to some other sources, Apple is probably going to release the periscope lens in 2023. Since as of right now, they are facing some difficulties with patents that Samsung owns. There are rumors, however, that Apple is either going to pay a small licensing fee or double of a workaround. All this remains to be seen yet, and improvements on the ultra wide is also much needed since Androids are currently offering a way better viewing angle, although they do suffer in video. So that is basically it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Also, leave a like on this one if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys on the next one.